Hello, my name is Torin Atkinson. I am a storyboard artist by trade. I am a sometimes voice actor, and I am a dungeon master. I have been playing D&D and running D&D since probably about 1985, which would be the third season of this particular cartoon, the Dungeons and Dragons cartoon, which I'm going to go. We're going to take a look at the premiere episode, The Night of No Tomorrow, and I will be giving it my own personal commentary as an animation professional and as a uh, player of Dungeons and Dragons as well. So let's uh, let's take a look, shall we? Uh, no commentary. I listened to the commentary last night, and there were some interesting things that I may that may come up. Um, this, by the way, is off of my DVD box set, which came out during third edition D and D, and the box set actually came with the stats and an adventure of the characters from the cartoon, so you could play. Um, and I did play a campaign, um, but not using the characters from the cartoon. I, uh, my group made up their own kids, and we worked on their own weapons, and we ran through some of these. Uh, I adapted some of these episodes uh, to actual gameplay. Not this particular one, though, because it's not really suitable. And we can talk about why not. Six average American teenagers... The animation is pretty good through most of this series. Uh, it was Toei Animation, T-O-E-I. They were busy in the 80s doing lots of stuff. And you can see some sequences are more anime than others. This is where everyone gets their class. The beginning intro is the background, which they don't really do anymore in cartoons but it's great it's a great format introduce the characters they all got their classes in the intro Diana was the acrobat which was not precisely a D&D class it was a acrobat thief this was written by Mark Evanier who is a legend in animation and he has a blog news from me Mark Evanier being M.E., news from me. And there's a lot of information on his uh, storied career, including some D&D tidbits. There's Uni, voiced by Frank Welker. The cast, as they mentioned on the commentary, were all... Uh, 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 this is kind of the first time in animation that they used famous people. As uh, this is Donnie Most from Happy Days, and a couple of the other characters are from Eight Is Enough, which of course young people today will have no idea what those are. And probably the young people watching this cartoon in 1983 didn't know who those people were either. But <laughs> they used actor actors instead of voice actors. And here's our friend. Tiamat the dragon, quite possibly the most powerful creature in the monster manual. And of course, Bobby's like, yeah, I'm going to kill it. Setting that up. I don't know who's voicing her in this scene, but she is voiced by Frank Welker sometimes. Tiamat has uh, how many hit points? In AD&D, which is contemporary with this cartoon, she had I'm looking this up real quick, 128 hit points. Which seems low compared to the 600 something she has in 5th edition. How did Bobby get up there so fast? Wasn't he like pinned to a rock with Hank's arrow? And here's their tormentor, the Dungeon Master. The guy who does not give straight answers. I hope my volumes are okay. Maybe I'll turn this up just a wee bit. All things are written by 
in the script. Tonight is the celebration in the village of Helix. You will journey to the North Point. There you may find something that will help you get back home. Helix was once at the mercy of I don't dragons. believe that Helix is an actual part of D&D. Um, the game. I didn't look that up, though. Venger, of course. <laughs> the rather goofy-looking bad guy. That's the key. Watch out for the white hair. They're always, like, astonished when Dungeon Master disappears. This is the premiere, but back in the day, it was uh, obviously episode. You can watch episodes in any order, really, more or less, except with maybe a couple of of them. Um, so even though this is the first episode, he's like, "I hate when he does that. This happens all the time." So now, as this is a brilliant way to create a cartoon in D and D, actually, because the kids will obviously identify with the kids, because they're not the kids in native to the realm. They're like, I like hamburgers and pizza, and I hate homework. Gee, Presto, I kind of like my burgers a little more well done than that. Some comedy beef. Let's keep walking. There's got to be something out here. <laughs> Get back in there. <laughs> According to this, we're somewhere near Merlin's castle. Oh, right. Merlin the magician. He's supposed to be able to work miracles. According to legend, Merlin can do anything. Even get us home? If Merlin can't, no one can. Huh? Oh, Merlin's no. They went too far. Way. But that's the way we just came. We couldn't have missed it. Merlin, not... not not a D&D &D entity. According to these signs, it should be right here. I don't get it. I do. You forgot. To as far as I know. Wow. He lives in a castle in the sky? Where do you expect? Just like Hayao Miyazaki's film, The Castle in the Sky. Home. Only not as good. They have to help us get to Merlin. Hey, look. A ladder. Moylan. Everyone, follow me. Finally, we're going to meet a real wizard. Oh. Out. Take that. Take that, Presto. Presto's real name is Albert. They never mention it in the um, cartoon, but it's in the show Bible. What's a show Bible, you might ask? It's uh, something that they make for all the writers, because they have different script writers. And it sets up the characters in the world and the bad guys and the, kind of the rules of the world. Remember what the dungeon master said about Venger. Sometimes they call him the Dungeon Master. Sometimes they call him Dungeon Master. Can't you just swim across the moat? Maybe you'd like to try. Uh oh. No, no thanks. I've never cared much for skydiving. This looks like my department. So, um, what's her name? Diana. She, her magic weapon is obviously this pole, which doesn't do a lot. Um, apparently in the show Bible, it gives her, makes her more acrobatic than she already is. That's not really portrayed well or at all in the show. Like, she's, she's already, like, um, what do you call it? A gymnast. An expert level gymnast back in the real world. So here's Moylan. What's he got on his hands? And a white bunny. But the one thing I cannot do is grow hair. Yeah, you can trust me because I'm bald. We were warned that an enemy of ours just ask him about getting us home. Merlin was in the original Deities and Demigods, says uh, Talentless Claude on my Twitch chat. A.K.A. Warren. Hi, Warren. Good morning. I wonder what... I should check to see what year Deities and Demigods was released. This was 1983, so it was probably written in 1982. Animation takes a long time. That's good animation on that hand. I'll tell you that right now. He's got pretty. He's got beautiful nails, Merlin. <laughs> Bobby's a bit of a dick. 
cast a spell and his good magic drove out so the dragons, were gone. the dragons in this episode are brown which did not exist in D and D. I don't know why they didn't use red dragons. Hey, great story there, you know. But I didn't come to listen to fairy tales. Now, if you're not gonna help us get home, I'm leaving. Yes. And Tiamat just happens to be hanging around. Dude, use your breath weapon and burn them all to cinders. I mean, that's what I'd do if I Timmy, if I was Tiamat. Moylan saves the day. Now that's magic. It'd be cool if like all of his heads talked at once, but that's more animation. That's not in the budget. I wonder if that was pitched by the writers and the, <laughs> and the producer was like, ah, we'll just get one of the dragon heads to talk. And of course, Frank Welker, if he's doing um, the voice for... Tiamat. He has what he calls his cave voice, which make, kind of makes it sound like there's an echo on his own voice, which he uses for a lot in a lot of different cartoons. Tiamat just crushing it, but still not using his breath weapons. We're trapped! There's no way out! What about down there? The dungeon. No escape. The oubliette. No escape. When the Sir really needs him to uh, do good magic, he does do good magic. Tiamat being an idiot. Like, does he chase them because he's hungry? Or because he's evil and he just doesn't like them? You'll notice in that shot, this happens to Dan a lot. It's kind of like a boomerang. Uh, it actually, she threw her uh, staff and then it, or leaped, and then it kind of bounced back into her hand. But it's not, it's a, not rabbit. a rabbit, it's a hare. A white hare, a white hare. remember when Dungeon Master said not to trust a person with a white hair? No, they're clueless. No, no. I'm 70 years yeah, uh, Warren says Deities and Demigods was out by then, so that makes sense. That one? <laughs> He's got uh, golden eyes, Merlin. But only if you stay here for the rest of your life. Wow. Brutal. Listen, if Merlin's not going to help us get home, I say we shove off for that Helix place, huh? Eric, we have to wait for Presto. So this is one of the mandates of the show, was that um, Eric was a character who would always uh, want to go against the group's uh, decisions, and he would be punished for it. The, the message of the show is stick together, kids. Groupthink is good. I can't believe it. It's our fault, you know. Always making fun of him when his magic tricks backfired. There's not enough Satanism in this cartoon. I need you. Although there are demons. Demons do show up in a couple of episodes. You with the dragon? How? The answers to all questions are contained in this book. I'm going to leave this book full of magic. Answers to all questions with you. See, Presto's heart's in the right place. I wasn't listening to the music, but I think... I think in this episode they reuse some music from, uh, this is a Marvel production, and of course Spider-Man and his amazing friends and the Incredible Hulk were also Marvel productions that were around this time, a little earlier. There's the dragon, and uh, this series reused some of that music from other Marvel productions. Moylan, help me! I did a bad! <laughs> I'm really sorry. So, you were 
trying to create a spell that would get you and your friends back home, correct? Yes, yes, and I'm sorry, but the dragons... Ah, yes, the dragons. Here we go. I switched the spells. Only good magic could undo Merlin's spell and release the dragons. So I had to trick you into undoing Merlin's spell. But you're Merlin. Aren't you? Merlin hasn't lived for a thousand years. Oh, here we go. Watch this morphing. That's pretty great. Wow, the sound effects in this show are not super great. Take. <laughs> yoink. I will yoink your hat. I'll get the rest. And he just wants to destroy Helix. He doesn't care about the rest of the uh, magic weapons. He's always trying to get the weapons of power. Give me your weapons of power. Uh, presumably so he can rule the realm and kill Dungeon Master. But today he just wants to destroy this town of halflings? Dwarves? There's <laughs> clearly a male voice actor doing uh, the old uh, oracle, the fortune teller. I don't know who this voice is. Uh, I'm doing a blog entry on uh, these episodes and trying to catalog all the voices that Frank Welker does. I don't think that's Frank Welker. But he's always like townsfolk number two or... An orc or a lizard man. Charles Smith in the chat says, Venger was DM's son, wasn't he? Spoiler alert. Spoiler alert from the final episode. Finally, the kids are cluing in. That Merlin was a bad guy. Because he had a rabbit. Not super great dragon sounds. In my experience. They couldn't, like, record a camel or something. I think this is the only episode where they're at, they ride horses. Oh, here's a panty shot right there for, for <laughs> Diana. Do you think those are, like, medieval panties, or do those panties come with her from Earth? Because Presto keeps his glasses from Earth. And in a later episode, Eric has a handful of cash. Let's just not try to overthink it, I guess. He just left the... Just left the, uh... <laughs> the ladder down for anyone to come back and rescue Presto. And that's short-sightedness on Venger. Left the drawbridge down, presumably. These kids are supposed to be 14, 15. Except for Bobby. And you will not cast another spell tonight. Tell me if you think that is the correct age for the these kids as they are portrayed. Are. There's you yeah, she's doing acrobatics. No Diana gets the spotlight, the one person of color. She's also like the most probably the most competent in the group. Along with Hank. Well Hank is kinda of so so. Like, I feel like Di Diana could survive in the room without her magic weapon. Without too much of a problem. Good job. Like, I wonder what level these guys are supposed to be. Of course, the writers don't care about that, but this is what us nerds think. You got any? Sheila is generally the worry wart of the group, but she does have her moments. She comes up with plans once in a while. <laughs> sprinkle, sprinkle. <laughs> Remember the one thing that Bender's afraid of? PMF is dragon. 
Tiamat the dragon. She's just been in there. Don't we have enough problems? Do you think all three of those kids? I guess Bobby might be super strong with his club, but like I'm like those kids aren't gonna. Those three kids are not gonna be able to lift that tree. Here she comes. That's a good shot. You've already added his magic to yours. Seems like the size of Tiamat changes from scene to scene, depending on how big the room is. <laughs> That's a great shot. <laughs> Presto, hurry! There's still time to save Helix, but not much. Yeah, there's, they're pretty much okay. all dead at this point. Here goes nothing. In the name of Merlin, in the time of sorrow, banish winged demons. Let there be tomorrow. Good job. Throw that purple dryer lint into there. I knew it would work. Something's happening. But the dragons are disappearing. You did it, Preston. Not only did the dragons disappear, but all the damage I disappeared. That's a good job. Not because I liked him. Oh, Uni. That's not all. Merlin's whole castle is floating away. Now I'll never So I guess that was really Merlin's castle. That wasn't just Avenger illusion. I wouldn't say that. Here comes Do Yoda. <laughs> Yoo-hoo! <laughs> hey everybody! I'm back in the magic business. Oh great. Listen, Dungeon Master. Apparently this episode was written in two days. By Mark Evanier, which, for all its faults, is pretty great. Well, I know a place where they think you're as good as Merlin himself. Yeah, Helix. That's right, Presto. In Helix, you're a hero. I am. Let's yeah, let's party. Are you kidding? I don't ride with anyone else. I want a speed of my own. Presto, would you produce something for Eric to ride on? Sure. It's a great callback. Actually, in the final episode, they should come back to the cow as well. Post credit scene. <laughs> ride the cow, Eric. Ride the cow. There we go. Uh, beautiful. Uh, end closing credits. Um, what I don't like about these credits is they're the same for every episode. So if there's any guest stars, um, it doesn't tell you who they are. Like there's some, they do have uh, the occasional guest star, like other actors from other shows. Um, but they don't list them in the credits. And I'm not 100% sure if, um, there's our good friends at Savan, if that's because of my DVD. Or because of it was original broadcast that way. So that was the first episode of uh, Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, next week, if I have the time, I will do the Eye of the Beholder. Beholder being one of my most favoriteest D and D monsters. Um, what else can I tell you? Um, I feel like um, there's uh, there is a website called um, I don't know what it's called, but it has a bunch of storyboards and scripts on it. And the storyboards, as a storyboard artist, the boards uh, on this show were chef's kiss in terms of drawings. Um, you would actually do a lot more drawing on storyboards today. Of course, we use software now, not pieces of paper. Um, but there would be a lot more um, character exits, screen left, and stuff like that. Whereas the, the storyboards back in the 80s were more kind of basic. And... But uh, maybe next time... I can share some with you. That'll be fun. But right now, I feel like it's uh, it's um, it's time to go. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Um, if you're watching on YouTube, be sure to like and subscribe. I also do a series called 20 Minute Monsters, where I draw monsters from the Advanced Dungeons & Dragons handbook. I, uh, I live stream those on Sunday mornings. And uh, I, hope, uh, I hope to see you again soon. And remember... What Dungeon Master always says, all things have a purpose, ye schmuck. Okay, see you later.